Man, I need to find Trevor. He's not in there. But she's in here. Hey, Trev, you got five minutes? Um, kind of. Hey, Lance is tied up. Can you run out there and change a couple tools over on the L32? Should only take a few minutes. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Give me five minutes. <sighs> not only does Mike have no concept of personal space, he also doesn't have a good concept of how long it actually takes to install a couple tools. So let's see how long it actually takes us to install the tools he wants us to do. Let's see what happens. All right, so the first tool that Mike wants us to throw in this machine is a standard right-hand turn tool. We're gonna throw it in tool position five, which is a currently wide open position. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna go to preparation page. We're gonna arrow down until it's highlighted on tool five, because that's the position we want. And we're actually gonna to wanna to call up that position. So we're gonna hit position point. We're gonna turn our feed rate down, double tap our cycle start. And if we watch and move in our feed slowly, it'll pick that up and it'll bring our gang over until tool position three is in its position that we need to. So now we can actually go in and load the tool into the machine. Gotta work around our clamps here. And right now, right now the main thing is just to set it in there and just let it sit on the material. Position point is a set parameter where the tool sets above the diameter that's in the machine. In this case, it's three quarter inch diameter. For Kremen, that standard is 100,000. So when we say position point, that means 100,000 is above the diameter. It could be totally different for someone else or another facility. So now that we have that in position, we're actually gonna go to manual set. It's gonna start at core. You wanna make sure that you move down to diameter to set that diameter to zero. And we're gonna hit cycle start again. And you see that machine pick up, move back down, and now it's in position point. So manual set is the point at which the insert is gonna to touch the outer diameter of that material. So now we're ready to tighten this thing down. And this time we're gonna just kinda of take our clamps. We're not tightening them up super tight yet. We're just getting it snug so it'll hold into the gang just in case something happens or something needs to move. We just want it just kind of sitting there snug. All right, now that we have the tool sitting onto the material and just slightly snugged up, so hold in, we're gonna bring it up out of the way so we can tighten it. And to do that, we're gonna go to position point and we're gonna hit cycle start. And it moves the tool up and out of the way. So now you can go in and tighten your clamps. Now do these back and forth. Make sure you're evenly tightening your clamps and make sure you tighten them to the torque that is required by the clamp manufacturer that you're using. All right, now that we set the tool, we now need to set the core, and we need to check this, make sure it's not leaving a turning tip on the end of the material. And in order to do that, we need to first set up the material so we can face the end of it to see what this tool does for us. And to do that, we're gonna go into manual mode. We're gonna go to our Z-axis. We wanna move our bar back so the tool is uh, not taking off so much material, about like so. And then we're gonna go back to preparation and we're gonna make sure we're on core and we're gonna do a cutoff cycle. So hit cutoff and then we're actually gonna go and hit cutoff and the cycle simultaneously. Until it fires up and actually does the cutoff cycle. Okay, now that that's done, we're actually gonna take and make this go back to its position point, which is above the material. So we're gonna go to position point, hit cycle start, and now it's back up out of the way. So here, what we're doing is we're actually looking for any turning tip, whether to tell us if that tool is above center or below center on the material. And right now I feel a little bit of a, a turning tip, which tells me it's below center. So just judging by the feel, I'm gonna say I need to move it about, about 15 thousandths in my core to bring it onto center so it's nice and smooth across that. I'm gonna get out of my cutoff view, so I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna go to my manual set. I'm gonna go over to my core and I'm gonna input my offset. In this case, I'm gonna go 0.014. I'm gonna input 14 thousandths positive because it's below center. I'm gonna input there, and now I'm gonna repeat those steps and reface that material. So to do that, we're gonna go back into our manual mode, 
Go to Z-axis to move our bars out. We're gonna move it out so it's got a little material to face off. And we're gonna go back through that cycle of going to preparation. We're gonna go 205, we're still in 205, and we're gonna go to cutoff. And we're gonna run this cycle. So we gotta hit cutoff and cycle start simultaneously until it starts up running. Now with any luck, we'll be pretty close to flat smoother on this face once this part's off. It's done, so we'll go to position point to get it up out of our way. And run our finger in there. We were dead on the money. That thing is flat smooth. So that tool, the core is now set. It leaves no turning tit, has a nice finish on the face. It is set and that tool is ready to go. All right, so the second tool that Mike so obnoxiously wants us to put in this machine is just a standard 3 8 end mill. Similar process to the turn tool, but it's a little bit different because it's a live tool that we're gonna mount in here. And to do that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make it easy on ourselves and we're gonna bring the gang over to us so it's a little bit easier to put this tool in. And to do so, we're gonna go into manual mode. We're gonna make sure our tool is all the way up. So let's move it to rapid movement. We're gonna bring this guy up. And then we're gonna bring this gang all the way over. So let's move down to our Y axis and we're gonna bring her on over. This just makes it a little bit easier for us to put this guy in here. A lot of sharp tools in here. You don't wanna slip and have an accident. So important part with end mills and any other live tools is you need to know what your set distance is coming off of this. Uh, some guys will use rulers or measurements to set these or a block. You just wanna get it close and held up in there. So I just got it snugged up in there. It's not tight. Now we're actually gonna call up that tool position. In this case, we're in tool position eight. So go to our preparation page. Let's make sure our raw material is back out of the way which is sucked back in, it's back out of the way. Let's get the position point of the correct tool. Go to tool eight. We're gonna go to position point. And again, we're gonna wanna take our time with this. You don't wanna smack anything. So let's turn our feed rate down. And then we're gonna go cycle start twice. And then we can control this jogging our feed rate. So it's gonna come down. So what you can actually see is with that material back, I actually have to lift up that tool, suck it up a little bit more based on where that core position is. So. I'll do that, get it close, and now I'll grab my tools, my wrenches, and I'll give her a good snug. All right, she's snugged up in there. All right, so now that we have the tool set and clamped in position, we're actually ready to touch it off the top of the material. And in order to do that, we're going to come over to our control, we're going to go into our preparation page, we're going to tab over to our diameter and we're gonna go manual set point to call this up. And while everything's clear out of the way, we're gonna hit cycle start twice. It's gonna bring that end mill down to the start point of where we want it. We can now though, while we're still in that same screen, tab down to our longitudinal. What this does, it allows us to move the bar out underneath that tool, like so. Which right now I am really, really close. So now we can go back up to our diameter and we're actually gonna test and see where this is at. So I'm gonna grab a sticky note. If you're a smoker, a lot of guys like to use a plastic film on a cigarette pack uh, to be able to do this. You'll actually slip this underneath the tool in between it and the diameter and then slowly feed that end mill down onto that material. You'll know you'll be getting close once you start to feel it grab that sticky note. It's starting to catch, it's starting to drag a little bit, and you'll keep feeding this down until it actually hits where it's actually almost pinching it. Right there, it's just starting to cut the, cut the stick, sticky note. So we know we're close. At this point, we take our value and we just in the diameter and we simply hit input. That now makes the offset. The machine now knows roughly where the top of that material is to the bottom of that end mill. Once you're done with that, you're ready to go to position point to get it up out of the way. So we'll go position point, cycle start, brings that end mill back off that, and that tool is now set, it's ready to go, and you can move on to the next thing. All right, so Mike wasn't really wrong, but it only should take five minutes. Once you get really good at setting tools, you should be able to throw a couple tools in here in less than that. But for the love of God, why can't I find one quiet place in here to eat my lunch? Woo -woo. Next stop, my thighs. These bags keep like 
seem like they keep getting smaller. 